Hey guys, I'm gonna do another video on batteries. I've been doing a lot with batteries lately and I figured I would make a video of how I repair and or replace um, these hoverboard batteries or scooter batteries or whatever. Um, you know, the, the hoverboards, the real small hoverboards usually have like six or seven cell pack, kind of like this uh, for the smaller ones and then a lot of them have the 10 cell packs like this one or this one. Um, and generally what you get inside of those is like this. Um, you know, it's just, it's pretty much the same. So all of these are pretty much the same battery configuration. Um, usually cheap Chinese batteries, uh, cells, um, but it depends, it just depends. So I figured I'd show you a quick video on how to, uh, repair them. Um, so a lot of these hoverboards, what happens is a cell goes bad or a couple cells or something. And so when that happens, uh, it ends up not... It, it the whole pack ends up getting drained below the BEC cutoff so you can either ride it for a few minutes or not at all um, so it's, it's rarely the whole pack it's not usually all the cells um, and to replace a single cell you could do like what I did with this one you kind of carefully cut it out put a new cell in and then re spot weld uh, the new cell in and you're back in business and depending upon how good or new the cells are, that usually will work because the bees, the the um, balancing board will kind of take care of the rest. Um, but it just it just depends on the the quality of the batteries and the cells and stuff like that. But anyway, so I've been doing a lot with these batteries lately. I've learned a lot. It's just been kind of a fun ride. I figured I'd share some of what I learned with you guys. So this is one of the bigger batteries. This is out of the bigger hoverboards that are designed to carry more weight and or run for a longer period of time. This is 20 cells instead of 10 cells like that. But everything else is pretty much the same. They just group all the cells in twos instead of ones. Um, and usually if they have just heat shrink like this, you just take a, a razor blade and you slice the heat shrink. And then you can pull the heat shrink off and like a lot of times they do two, one in each direction. And so it's the same thing. You just kind of be careful not to cut in the cells. Usually I'll lift up on it a little bit as I'm cutting just to pull this out. It, it saves you from having to use new heat shrink because you can just put this back on and tape it and, and you're, you're usually totally fine with that. So once you cut the heat shrink free and you pull those off, then usually there's a couple of extra little layers of, of protection. This one like this, you could see kind of keeps, keeps the components on top from getting touched and one on the bottom like this. So you could pull those off. And, um, and then at this point, what I've done in the past, you know, what I usually do is I'll, I'll test each individual cell. So the way these BMS boards work is usually um, they have a negative and then a point for every single positive of the 10 individual cells or groups of cells. So if you put a meter on on one of on the on the if you put a meter on the negative, you can go right down the line and you can see whether the individual cells are good. And you can see this one is number one, and it is 0.3. So that would imply that it's yeah 0.38. So that's a bad cell. And then the next one is 2.66 minus the 0.37 means this is 2.3. So that was really low. Um, and you can kind of go all like this one six. So there's another bad cell. So this this whole pack is shot. Like the fact that the whole pack 
most of these cells are either completely dead or close to completely dead. Um, and and in, in theory, in a good cell, you would do the positive and the negative, or the positive and negative, and this entire pack should be at least 35, and it's 7.8. So this, most of the cells in this pack are bad. Um, if, if, if you determine it's just a single cell or a couple of cells, you, I would replace those individual cells. In this case, these, all these cells should be removed and you can probably salvage a few cells out of them that are fine. You can cycle them and just make sure they're good. But um, taking these things apart, um, and I'll tell you right up front, it's not like cost effective. It's just if you enjoy doing it or if you just want to know how it's done because it takes, you know, at least an hour or two to, to do this. And, you know, depending upon how much you think your time is worth, buying a new battery is usually, you know, because you have to, <clears throat> these cells, good cells are, are like three or four dollars a piece new. Um, if you buy them used, I buy a lot of used batteries from Battery Hookup, and those cells are usually more like a dollar each, and so if you're careful, you can get some pretty good cells that really haven't been used much for more like a dollar, but even a dollar, that's $20 worth of cells in here. And then at least, you know, an hour or two of your time. And then some nickel strips, which the nickel strips are, aren't the cheapest either. So the nickel strips add more expense. And, and um, you know, as long as the BMS board's good, that helps a lot because the BMS boards tend to be fairly, uh, you know, 10, 20 bucks, depending upon you know, or a lot more if you're a bigger, bigger thing. Um, so it's not really cost effective, but it's, I just kind of enjoy it. I kind of enjoy the, it, it helps to at least know and understand what's going on with your battery. <clears throat> this is plugged into your hoverboard. And in this case, there is no separate charging. A lot of times I'll have a second port that goes for the charging port. It charges straight, this one charges straight through the same board so basically the the positive is straight from the battery to your hoverboard and charger and all that and the negative goes through all of this to make sure that each cell is balanced to all of them and the board also has like a cutoff a 3.5 volt cutoff usually and a 4.2 volt top so that it it makes sure you don't over discharge or overcharge your your battery which would extend the life of the battery so <clears throat> so if if you're going to replace these these cells um, now you need to take this board off and then you need to take um, you know all this kind of all this metal the nickel plating out so that you can pull these pieces apart put new cells in and then put new nickel strips down um, and then put the, the board back on. <clears throat> so because it has 10 cells or 10 banks of cells, it has 10 points, actually 11. It has the one for the negative, and then it has 10 points for all 10 of the positive connections on this battery. So you have your main leads here, but you have this, and then you can count all the way around it. Um, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. That's your tenth one. So it has the ten positive connections. Each one of these touch a positive connection of the ten sets of two. And then this is the negative. That's kind of where it starts um, or, or ends. Um, so in order to get this board off, you need to cut all of these. You need to desolder the wires that are leading down to this side of the battery and snip the little wire connections and or desolder, but it's awfully hard to desolder these because you have to melt this and pull these off. And I always had trouble with that, at least while it's on the, the board. So what I usually do is I'll snip them um, because these are, they use pretty thin um, metal usually, uh, nickel strips, 
So a lot of times I can just go in with a, a knife and and cut it out. Um, and obviously this still has voltage in it, so you want to be <laughs> careful with what you're doing and make sure these wires don't touch each other and stuff like that. So there's there's definitely some risk involved. Um, it, it's hard to tell, but there's a gap between the top of the batteries and the board. So that's good to keep connections from touching. And it gives you somewhere to slide this in and cut these. So if you just kind of slide that in and you cut at these strips, you can see that it will cut through fairly easily. And now that's not connected anymore. Um, so you can go around and do all of them this way. All right, so once you cut through all those tabs, then you just need to desolder the the ones that come up from the bottom of the pack. So those most of those connections are real thin. The one for the main negative and positive are a little thicker, but I do the same thing. I just slide the razor blade in there and cut those loose. And then once you get the BMS board off, as you can see here, I like to save the black holder that it's in because that's what kind of holds it all together and makes it really easy. So it takes you a little while to remove the batteries without damaging the black um, cover. So as you can see, I just take my razor blade and slide it in there and, and just take my time cutting the, the uh, nickel strips up so that each individual cell is cut loose. And then I pull that off. And then, and then at this point, I, to make it easy, to make sure that you get the battery the exact same way as it was before, I put the batteries in the, the top one, as you can see here. And I test them all and make sure that they're all matched. So once I get those and I know that they're in the right place, then I do the same thing with the bottom of the battery. As you can see, I, I just slowly cut the nickel strips off so that I can pull the batteries out without damaging the, the black holder. It takes a little while. If you don't want to save the black holder or whatever, you can obviously you can just cut them out real quick. But um, and, and it, it turns out that a fair amount of those batteries were actually still usable. They, I'm sure they're damaged because they were completely, most of them were completely dead or close to completely dead. But I char recharged them all and probably half of them seemed to take a good charge. So now that I've got that done, now it's time to put the new nickel strips on. I use thicker nickel strips so that um, you get better current flow through them. And the main thing there is you want to make sure that you put the little nickel strips tabs sticking out the sides that need to come up and touch the BMS board. So I just crisscross. You can use the, the double nickel strips, um, but for me it's just as easy to, to use the, the single 8 millimeter, 0.2 uh, nickel strips and then you just do four like that so um, as you can see now though that's the negative and positive or the main negative and positive so they need to have a nickel strip coming off of them so rather than try to spot weld while it's on the battery I did it off the battery that way you don't sometimes when you try to spot weld over uh, the between the batteries it tends to short out the positive side sometimes if you're not careful so I did it off the, the other side and then the, the bottom is pretty straightforward I mean there's little channels that they sit in the, the nickel strip sits in so it's kind of nice that you just take your time and go around and do the quick spot welds you know, all the way around um, I I think it took me a couple hours to build this battery, so like I said, it's not exactly cost-effective, but 
and then yeah at this point the battery all uh 37 38 volts i think at this point it's all ready to go you do need to solder on the strips that need to go around to the bms board from the bottom so you just there's little channels i like to use a dremel to to scuff up the nickel strip a little bit and then pre-tin it as you can see there so then I just go around and I add those to all the the positives put the protective tape back on and flip it over and now we're do the same thing there you have you can do little nickel strips there that come up and over but for me I just um, soldered the top like that so that I have the wires at the top too. And you put the BMS board back on and you can re-solder the connections to all the ones on the bottom and all the ones on the top that I came around. And so once you solder all these, then all the positives, except for the very first and the negatives are done so yeah you just go all the way around like that solder those back on and then the last things you do are uh, bend the nickel strips over and and solder those to the main positive and name main negative I when I spot welded them i made them a little bit too long just to make sure that they're not too short and then i just cut them to the right length and then put the protective things back on and at this point the battery's done you test make sure the battery's done but you can reuse the same um, heat shrink and a little bit of tape and you're done thanks for watching